Hello, Andy here and Andy Wright Travel with a little story that you may not have heard about. Uh, BRP, Biometric Residence Permits. is all about when you come here to live uh, and as if, you, if you have Thai girlfriends or wives you will know what a palaver and what a cost it is to get them to live here so the idea here is that they have a BRP and we're going to explain what that is but apparently all BRPs are expiring at the end of this next year, 31st of December 2024. So they're going to be expiring. I don't know what they're going to be replacing it with yet, but we'll have a look at, first of all, what is a BRP? So a BRP is a residence permit that can c confirm your identity, your right to study, or right to public services or benefits. So it's like an ID card. You cannot use it to confirm your right to work or rent. You'll usually get a BRP if you apply to come to UK for longer than six months, extend your visa to longer than six months, apply to settle, so you're, you're going uh, down that route, or you transfer your visa to a new passport, uh, or your some, some home office travel documents. BRPs are different from... BRCs. <laughs> BRCs are also called UK residence cards. You might have one if you're in the UK as a family member of someone. Uh, BRP have a residence card printed on them. Now you can get your BRP if you use the UK Immigration ID Check app to prove your ID when you're applying to stay in the UK. Your BRP will include your de name, date of birth uh, and place of birth, your fingerprints and your photo of your face. This is your biometric information, your immigration status, any conditions of your stay, whether you can access public funds. For example, if you have paid the national insurance uh, premium, um, it will also have your national insurance number printed on the back of it. And that's if you've applied for one. Uh, so obviously it's quite important and of course um, it's a document that is currently going to be stopping very very soon. So let's have a look at this video which I saw and obviously we'll explain a little bit more about it. Why is your BRP expiring on the 31st of December 2024? Does your biometric residence permit to enter and stay in the UK also have an expiry date of the 31st of December 2024? In today's video, we are going to talk about the main reasons behind this and how those affected by it can confirm their status in the future. People who have recently received an indefinite leave to remain, or ILR, have been given BRPs that will expire on the 31st of December 2024. The same applies to individuals who have been granted permission to stay in the UK for a limited time, even though they have been allowed to remain in the country for longer than the 31st of December 2024. So, what are the reasons behind the expiry date of BRPs? For starters, this is because of the European Union's plans to incorporate an advanced encryption technology that the Home Office wanted to initiate from the 1st of January 2025. Although the EU's requirements are not relevant anymore, the Home Office seems determined to move forward with its plans to digitalize proof of status. This is why it continues to grant BRPs with an expiry date of the 31st of December 2024. In addition to this, the Home Office has also stated that people will no longer need a BRP from the 1st of January 2025, 
as they will be able to prove their status online. The Home Office is expected to provide more information on how a person can avail of this option in early 2024. Furthermore, the Home Office has confirmed that this will not affect anyone's immigration status. How to accurately check the period owe your permission to stay. The Home Office will likely confirm the validity dates of an applicant's permission to enter or stay via email, provided that an application is approved successfully. Applicants are strongly advised to save the email that states their confirmed period of permission to stay in the UK. Individuals holding a BRP at the moment can utilize the online checking services to confirm their right to work or rent in the UK. Needless to say, the online checking services give accurate details concerning the duration of an individual's permission to stay in the UK. So I think the ILR, in, uh, the indefinite leave to remain in the UK, is something you, get, you have to apply for after you've done the series of tests that you've done uh, for living in the UK. And that's a little way down, either five years or ten years down that route. Um, and of course, lots of money. As you well know, if you're doing that already, you'll know how much money you're spending. The initial uh, visa to live here, settlement visa, is uh, going to cost you about four or five grand. Uh, and all of that money goes to the government. So obviously they are um, raking it in. They are raking it in. They're making a, a flipping mint on this uh, immigration lark. Yet they're letting people in for nothing and giving them hotel rooms and... Uh, you know, all the other stuff that they're getting. But they're obviously making people that really want to come here, they're making them pay. And uh, they're paying, uh, well, an extortionate amount of money that they don't get back if they're not careful. Because you can make one simple mistake and, hey presto, you've lost your money and there's no way that you'll get it back unless you fight it in court. And that obviously that will cost you money as well. You'll need to get legal advice on that. Certainly the legal advice I had when I was trying to fight it was um, you can either spend loads of money or you can forget it and uh, try again with a visa, which is exactly what we did, eventually trying to get another visa. And then that is when we discovered da, 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 that we had been banned for 10 years from the original uh, refusal, which was five years ago. So already we're halfway through. However, Nobody bothered to tell us. We didn't know. No paperwork, no messages, no phone calls that we have been banned. And it seems a bit extreme that we were banned for such a uh, an infraction, which actually was their own infraction. It wasn't our fault. So the three reasons they gave were actually, in, well, they were made up. Of course, uh, you cannot argue because it's a visit visa and... There is no process for contesting any decisions on visit visas. If you have a settlement visa that you're paying loads of money for, then you have a legal right to go to court and uh, appeal it. But obviously that will cost you money and time and effort. But a, a visit visa is, has been withdrawn from that idea. So that was 2016, I, I believe. But they changed the law so you cannot contest it. Because I do know somebody locally who did contest it before that date and they won basically they contested it and they won proving that their system is is a, a, a fraudulent system and in actual fact it costs 100 quid plus uh plus a lot of effort to get a visit visa and as far as i know you have to have really good reasons for for applying for it because they have to prove you have to prove that your lady is going to return home to thailand which means either a job, a house, a family, or some other reason for them to go home. It's no good just you saying that they're going to go home after six months. They have to actually prove it. And of course, the previous time, she went home within time. And um, that means absolutely diddly spot. So even though she went home last time, in, in well in time, um, that means nothing. And of course, it means that... Um, they take it on a case-by-case -case basis, uh, so you have to keep on proving that you are going to go home, and, and she would go home because we don't want to. We don't want to break the rules. We've already found out that they can just break the rules themselves. They don't need any any reason. 
they can just make up reasons to push it to what they did. And it's no good saying, well, you know, have a word with your MP or your solicitor because neither of them are any good. And of course, the solicitor will cost you money. Uh, I've already spent loads of money on this and I'm not going to bother. Uh, we're just going to wait and see uh, if something happens or if some law changes, but I doubt it very much. Of course, the other obvious one was, well, just put, get, her, get her to France and put her on a boat. But even the boats cost money. If you think about it, these immigrants are allegedly paying. You may as well do it the legal route and pay six grand and get it done properly. But obviously, and the other interesting thing is, according to all of this, is that when you apply like now, because she's banned, she can apply to go for a settlement visa, which is going to cost six grand. So she can apply for that, and and they, and obviously they will consider it. <laughs> but you know, if if that's the case, it proves that it's all about money, isn't it? So it's always about money. So anyway, look into it. If you're on a BRP card and you are on that method, then um, look out because they are going to expire. Also, there were some questions on the um, YouTube channel uh, video about people saying that they'd had, um, they've got an expiry of like 2029 and what they're going to do about five years worth of um, car. Are they going to get a refund? Pretty much, I think the answer to that is pretty obvious. The answer is no, because once the government have got your money, they don't give a flying monkeys. Um, certainly every every refusal, they keep the money, uh, especially with visit visa, £100 at a time. I would love to know how many uh, refusals they do uh, every year because that will give you a rough idea how much money, how much free money they're making out of uh, refusals for a visa just to come here for a holiday. And uh, you wonder why people bother. But hey, I hope that was useful. Uh, have a good day and I'll catch you next video.